If you struggle to make sampled beats, it might be because of the plugin or tool that you're using. So today let's cover five plugins for sampling, the pros and cons of each, and which one is best so your sampled beats can start to sound amazing. By the way, if you can do me a favor before we start, just hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps my channel out and I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So let's start off with number one, which I will say right away is the absolute worst way to make sampled beats in my opinion, using the playlist. This is the most manual, basic, and difficult way to sample and unfortunately, it's what many people use when they sample. They'll drag and drop their sample into the playlist and use the slice tool to chop up their sample and then drag those chops around to piece together a loop. This is the absolute worst way to sample for a few reasons. Compared to the other four choices on this list, you limit how many tools you have at your disposal. For example, stretching and repitching is a pain. To stretch a specific chop, you would first have to make it unique, then you'd have to go into the chop settings and change the stretch mode, then you'd have to turn stretch mode on in the playlist, all of this just to stretch one chop. Now I will give this approach its due. The one advantage that it does have is that you can easily stretch a chop to perfectly fit into one specific space. Meaning if you have a chop that you want to use to fill a specific gap, it becomes as easy as dragging it into that space and then just stretching it. But beyond that, using the playlist makes sampling just so much more hard and I would recommend even using the worst sampler over just the playlist if you make sampled beats. Speaking of which, let's move on to number two, which is the fruity slicer. I'll start off by being kind and generous. So one of the features about the Fruity Slicer that I absolutely love are the auto slicing dials. This lets you control how many chops you want with a turn of a couple dials. I think every other sampling tool on this list could definitely use a feature like this. Fruity Slicer also has easy pitch and stretch controls, which is nice. You can quickly change the pitch of your sample and you can stretch the length of each chop using the faders right next to each other. While this is definitely nice, what this is missing is the ability to do this on an individual chop by chop basis. When you use these faders, it applies to every single chop. And there might be times when you just need one chop to be extended or shrunk. But Fruity Slicer does not give you the ability to do this like some of the other plugins that we'll cover in this video. But what I think is by far the worst part about Fruity Slicer is actually trying to chop your samples. If you want to create your own chops, it is a nightmare. You have to chop inside this little screen here, which does not allow you to zoom in in case you want to be a little bit more accurate. And whenever you want to add a slice, you have to right click on the exact right spot and press split slice. Now, if you're using a sample like this one here, it's not as bad. It's pretty obvious where each new note is in this sample. But if you're using a sample like this one, you can hear in this chop, we have a bunch of different notes playing, but looking at the actual waveform, it's not as obvious where these notes actually are. And this is the problem with Fruity Slicer. When it comes to chopping, it's hard and annoying to be accurate. If you make a mistake with your chop, you have to delete the chop and then go right back to guessing once again. So this is why I personally stay away from Fruity Slicer for most of my sampling needs. I only use it for very simple, easy to chop samples like drum breaks where the auto slicing works amazingly and it's obvious where each chop should go. Other than that, this thing can be torture. Next, let's cover two plugins at the same time since they have similar pros and cons. It's SliceX and Edison. Let's talk about some of the things that they do well. Slicing is much better when it comes to these plugins. For one, you can actually zoom in, which is nice. You can also delete portions of your sample if you don't plan on using them, which is pretty convenient. Moving your chops around is simple and easy. I wish Fruity Slicer could do this. Adding chops is a breeze too. Just select the part of the sample that you want to add a chop to and just hit this button here. The biggest unique feature is the ability to shape your chops. You can play around with the envelope control here to get creative with your chops. And this level of control is something you don't see often. Whether or not you actually need this level of control is one thing though. This can be helpful for more experimental ideas, but less useful for straightforward sampling. Let's talk about the cons though. The absolute biggest one in my opinion is how hard it is to stretch and repitch. Here you have one master fader for both of these features for the entire sample. In Fruity Slicer, at least you can stretch without repitching and vice versa. 
Here you can't easily change one without the other. Moving this fader changes both the speed and pitch of your sample. If you do want to change either of these separately, it's an absolute pain. You have to go into a menu, click this little feature here that's tucked away. And what sucks is as you change these settings, it doesn't allow for live testing in your actual loop. So if I change some of these settings and I hit spacebar to preview, it won't let me hear how this sounds in the context of my actual loop or my beat that I'm building. It'll just play back this specific chop. So I don't actually have the ability to hear whether the changes here that I'm making will actually help my chop fit into my idea until I actually accept the settings. And if you end up making a mistake and you don't like the settings that you chose, you have to go all the way back and try to guess again what the correct settings are. And this is why using more advanced sampling techniques like this become a pain when you use SliceX. And another thing that really gets my goat is how awful the auto chopping is. Oftentimes when I sample, the only options that it gives me are to have a million chops, a zillion chops, or like 10. Again, it would be nice if this had a similar feature to Fruity Slicer where you can just turn a dial and it will create more or less chops based off of that. Now let's move on to number four. This isn't a plugin that comes with FL Studio, but it is absolutely free to download. It's Momentum. I covered this sample like two years ago and it's still my recommendation if you're making sample beats inside of FL Studio and you wanna use free tools. It's just better than the stock FL Studio tools. Right off the bat, I will say that it's kind of annoying that it asks you to make an account, but that's overall just a small little annoyance. Once you open it up and you throw your sample in, just go to the slice tab and get started. Momentum makes it easy when it comes to chopping. You can simply move chops around by dragging them. You can delete chops by just hitting delete on your keyboard or even deleting multiple chops at once. If you wanna add a chop, it's as simple as double clicking. And one advantage of momentum is better pitch and stretch control. If you go into the mixer, you can simply change the pitch of your entire sample here. Then you can go back into the slice area and change the speed of the sample. Just turn on stretch mode and change the BPM here. So this gives us separate controls for pitch and stretch, which is nice. It also gives you speed options to go half speed, single speed or double speed for more broad and quick changes. One additional benefit is that you can change the pitch of your individual chops much easier too. Just go into the effects, turn the pitch effect on and draw in the changes that you wanna make. Unfortunately, this does not let you stretch individual chops differently, which is a letdown. But another big advantage is that Momentum can continue to play chops as you hold your notes down. You probably notice in Slice X, for example, if you play a chop, it doesn't keep playing when it reaches the end of the chop. You have to do a bunch of extra stuff to get that to work. With Momentum, this is just much easier. You have one shot mode where it stops as soon as you reach the end of your note, just like Slice X would. But you can also choose these other options here too. This will just help you put together a full loop without having to be as precise with every single chop in your sample. Now there are a few cons that I will point out. Like I mentioned, you do have to create an account, kind of annoying. It also does require you to use WAV files, which I'm not sure why. If you try to drag in an MP3 into Momentum, it just does not work. But what's probably my biggest gripe, the reason why I eventually moved away from using this, is that it's just a bit buggy. For example, watch what happens when I grab this window marker and I try to zoom in on this sample here. This takes forever. I will say this could be entirely because of my computer, but this thing is pretty powerful. And Momentum's been out for a couple of years and they haven't addressed this with all the updates that they've made. But even with these issues, I would still give this a try. I prefer to use Momentum over any of the other free options when it comes to making sampled beats, even with these few annoyances. But let's move on to the final option, which I think is the best way to make sampled beats in my opinion, Serato Sample. Now this plugin does cost money, so automatically this might be a con for some people. It's going to be for people who are a bit more serious about sampling and are willing to pay. 
And if you watch this full video and you agree with the annoying problems with all the other samplers, Serato Sample basically addresses all of them. Throw in an MP3 or a Wave or whatever you want and just start by clicking Find Sample. Serato does its best to find sampleable parts and create chops there. And it's not going to give you a zillion chops, it always gives a manageable amount. If you don't like the chops that it gives you, you can always click again and it'll search once again and place new chops in new areas. You can control pitch and stretch of the whole sample in the top area here, and you can do this for individual chops in the bottom area. So as you can see, this gives you far more control compared to all the other samplers. Moving these chops around is simple and easy, and it's got the ability to change the attack and release, and volume and direction of each and every single chop in the middle area. It's pretty much got every single important feature that you need if you want to make sampled beats. I can't really think of any big con or downside really. It would be nice to be able to add chops rather than move pre-existing ones if you've used up every single chop slot, but I don't know what a good solution to this might be. Maybe it could auto move the next closest chop, I'm not sure, but I'm just nitpicking at this point. So as you can see, if I had to choose one sampler to rule them all, it would be Serato Sample. But if you're looking for the best free option, my personal recommendation is to use Momentum. Now once you have picked a sampler, next you'll probably need to learn some sampling techniques. So right next to me is a video where I show you three really cool sampling techniques to use. So by using what you learn in that video with the best sampling tool from this video, you will become a sampling legend in no time. So click the video. It is your destiny.